So I just immediately give up. I hate Craigslist. I never use it. Um, the first few times I looked into it, I just said, I can't really find what I want. Screw it. And, and, and uh, went away. So uh, to me, it's completely obscure and impenetrable. Um, I'm interested in how we can, we can see this problem more clearly. Because I bet you if you can identify the problem more clearly, we can do a lot more about it. But what would happen with it? People, people know that you know. That's a good example. Of this. Well, don't worry about what would happen with it. I mean, one step at a time, I guess, huh? I, I lived in Virginia for ten years, and I think one time I saw what I could look point at and say, "Hey, that was racism." I just saw some racism. I only once. And, and it was a while for me to figure it out because it was so strange. I, was, I walked into a store, and I was browsing around, and there was this black guy who was browsing around the same store. And then he seemed to want to do something with the... He wanted to get the attention of the clerk or something like that. And the clerk just talked to me instead. And I thought about it later. It's like, why did he talk to me... Wasn't it the, And then I thought, well, maybe the other guy was waiting for something else. Like, I don't know. I wasn't there when he got there, maybe. But I almost got the impression that, that the guy was being deliberately ignored. And so I thought, maybe is that racism? I don't know, but I think it might have been. She's but the problem is what? I can't tell. I can't tell. Because we can't I, see each other. And so, and so I, need to, I need to learn how to, to, to discover this problem. So you're saying if we people, can get tens of thousands of people to be able to see the problem, you then can, you would see more done about the problem. I bet. I'd like to imagine. So I would suggest that if, if uh, you want to make a... If there is actually a way for you to really help solve the problem. Just help solve. Not solve, but help solve. You would at least cause them to have to react um, to to find a way to protect themselves or hide better or something. I think that's what would happen is they would just get better at hiding this stuff. Mm -hmm. But we still have to pursue them. I mean, people of goodwill still have to try to expose what's happening. Uh, so I just wonder, how do you, how do you, you uh, why are you sure this is happening? How do you know it's happening? How do you tell where it's happening? And if you know, how come I don't know? And maybe there, that's a website, or maybe that's a, a blog or something like that. I don't know. But it, it could be something that you, where you could actually make a tangible contribution if you wanted to. It's a pretty difficult problem, though. I, I don't think that we could ever um, truly wipe it out. But I bet you it could be, it could be uh, decimated by factor of 10 you know, if, yeah. if once once uh, people really start uh, focusing on it I mean look at smoking for instance it used to be that lots of people in the United States smoked and you got the knowledge out but still lots fewer people you really notice it when you go to another country I go to Romania and most people I think most adults smoke in Romania so you see lots of smokers all over the place and then you realize wow at first you think, it's, there's lots of uh, people smoking. And then you say, wow, there's lots of people not smoking in the United States. And this wasn't like, it wasn't that way when I was a kid. When I was a kid, there were a lot more people who smoked. So, but a lot of improvement has happened in that. But that's what doesn't make sense to me. Why would anyone smoke? Who knows, who knows now that it's not... Well, because they're not smoking for rational reasons. They're smoking for irrational reasons. So, like you said, you can never truly end something. No, well, Trafficking, people... Trafficking, you can't. No, Someone's because we have... always going to be okay with it. Yeah, there are very powerful motivations that are at play. And so, the idea of... Uh, the idea of, uh, of... Of ending it worldwide, I don't think that anyone's going to do that. I think anyone who thinks they've done it will just have convinced themselves that it doesn't exist when it does exist. But I think it may be possible to uh, how do you, make it make it go on the run. How do you truly end something then? 
Is that possible? Well, name one thing of uh, human um, uh, in human experience you could still that use it was it that was true years ago, but it's no longer true. That was happening years ago, but it's no longer happening. Name one one thing that has ever ended in all of human experience. The dinosaurs. But that's not in, in human experience, <laughs> okay. so that doesn't count. I mean, something in human experience that people has ever Latin. that has ever ended. There Wait, are still people think. learning I Latin. Mean compulsory. Let's think. Hold on. No, let's think. Think small. Latin is still compulsory in think seminary small. school. Think small. Something that's ended, like a trend. There's nothing. Well, how would I know about that now if it ended? Well, because you study history. First of all. But I'll give you an ex I'll give you an example of something that ended in, in history or that almost okay. ended. It's pretty much ended. It used to be that Scotland was the sworn enemy of England. It used to be that Scotland was called the Lion of the North, and they were fierce warriors, and they were constantly attacking England for hundreds and hundreds of years, yeah, constantly yeah. attacking England. But that stopped. When did it stop? Hmm. Well, on that same subject, I don't know, I just kind of hit a light bulb. So that kind of makes sense, that correlation. So, yeah, countries who have waged war and hated each other, and then that ends, why does that end? Doesn't it end because aren't they fighting because of a financial or a, or a need that needs to be met that they're disagreeing on? Well, and once it's met, they can move on. So maybe something as in smoking or in trafficking, if we can find something to replace it. Or yeah. In other words, I'll tell you in the the case of Scotland because I got really interested in Scotland. Why did that change? One of the things that changed it is England bought. Scotland. They purchased it. In so 1707. We purchased traffic. <laughs> well, uh, it's kind of like that. Um, what I'm saying is is that that uh, there was a what I'm saying is that there was a major economic earthquake in Scotland which changed the whole dynamic that was causing Scotland to see itself as the enemy of England. And the main thing that happened is that the Scottish, all the, the rich people in Scotland, the rich and powerful people of Scotland, had invested in a really bad idea that lost all their money. They, they tried to start a new colony in the Americas, and it completely failed. It was a complete uh, mess. They lost something like 460,000 pounds or million pounds or something like that. Um, so what England did was really smart. England offered to pay them all the money they had lost to give it all back to them if they agreed to be formally part of England from then on. And all these people that had lost all their money said, yeah, we want our money back. We want to turn back time. It's like they were being given the chance to go back in the time machine before they lost their money. And so that was the beginning of it. That was the, not the end, but that was the beginning of changing Scotland from an enemy into a friend. And in other words, they, they made this blanket economic change. And you were saying money was a big deal about so this. So that just proved my point. If you get rid of third world countries, trafficking doesn't exist. Or if you do stuff exactly. like the Innovation Lab and those people who are buying, why are they buying them? Well, the, even the people happy. who are trafficking people, they don't do it because that's a passion. They do it because it's yeah. easy money. So do you know what, exactly, so do you know what uh, microcredit is? I do not. Microcredit is a big trend in the third world. Microcredit is the idea of giving very small loans to very small businesses. When I say very small, I mean like $500 or $200, you know, very small loans. The payback rate <coughs> on uh, very small loans is extremely high, but it helps tiny businesses get started in India. If you look at Kiva.org, for instance, great. you familiar with Kiva? Yeah, Kiva's awesome. Kiva is a system that lets uh, people like you and me who have some money, maybe we have a couple thousand dollars or something, and we want to do good with it, it lets us l actually give a loan to a specific person who has a specific proposal, who wants to do a, I don't know, a glass blowing business in Nigeria or